about every every uh, week now we, where we yeah, were like every other week correct, we do like correct. a body cam an episode body cam episodes and now we're doing an episode every every uh, week are you like well i guess we can we're ready we kick it off or we're, we want to start it off we're sent it we sent it oh, already, already there just start it all right guys oh, welcome no, back well, to another still episode still on the con- countdown oh okay 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 <laughs> the countdown is usually like you know just a little we definitely chit-chat. need to get that, that yeah tv up there so we can see and a little sign we got a few says, ideas you know, live you are know. we going live yeah, 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 it's yeah, usually yeah. live, yeah, because it's easier to just send it. We don't have a team to edit or yeah. or do any of that, so we just, you know, record it, send and it. then we'll ask for forgiveness later by the big meta. <laughs> He'll tell us. Like, <laughs> <laughs> They'll be like, hey, you, you guys <laughs> said this. Uh, you said this word, and you, you can't, can't say it. We've gotten we, that we already. Got, we get flagged. Have you really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we just yeah. talk about. Like bullying, this and that, and I was like, oh, man. "Ready?" All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Living the Dream <laughs> with Luis and Ray. Um, real quick, thanks everybody that tunes in. Thank very grateful guys. for you guys. Uh, happy to have you guys um, viewing us, sharing us, liking. We're very grateful. Today we have back your Bond Daddy Elliot back for the second time. Third, third, what's second up, time. What's up, second what's time. What's up? Second time. What's up? Second time. Yeah, we got, now we have we an got audience. A fan in here. We have we're audience fan. too. We have <laughs> we have a live button. audience. Hey, we should get that. He's gonna have. A, he's gonna have to do his own. Uh, oh. <laughs> right. Yeah, you're gonna do all the sound effects. That'll be good. That'll be good. Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. Oh man. How's it going, Elliot? That's good. I mean, that's funny that we were talking about that uh, the AI and stuff like that on social media yeah. oh, just yeah, kind of before that. we kicked it mm-hmm. off. Um, that's been, you know, TikTok was a big catalyst for our you know TV show on YouTube. And uh, like when we would go viral on TikTok, I mean, God, they would just throw us out there and we'd mm-hmm. have links to our YouTube. And like that, that, that funnel was just amazing. You know, mm-hmm. we had some really big from like zero to 10,000 subscribers. We had a lot of... Uh, you know, big jumps in there mm-hmm. from TikTok. But then the AI is so brilliant, you know what I'm saying? And it just started picking up on, like, guns and stuff because, I mean, that's right. what we do, you know? Right. I mean, whether it was a taser or yeah. a gun or whatever. Like the and body language is there, too. And I, I mean, I don't even know all the details because it was just overwhelming I mean, for so me. so smart. Yeah, I had the, my marketing guys would even put, like, fake gun and all the stuff they needed nope. to put down there nope. in the comment or the, you know, when Captions. they did the, the caption, yeah, and, and they started just flagging us and uh, – TikTok uh, put us in like account warning wow. and it was like for little short windows and we would you know write them or whatever to uh, get back you know right. our, our, our account and they would do it a little bit in the beginning but after like three or four of them they started like putting us in like you know account warning land for like months Ooh. and so um, I was a little bit freaked out about it uh, but, you know, we just kind of kept our eyes open, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. and didn't get pigeonholed into the, just that one platform. Mm-hmm. And that's when the YouTube shorts started kind of making their, you know, no their big jump. And so I was kind of talking with my guys. I was like, you know, screw screw these guys. You know what I'm right. saying? Let's, instead of doing, you know, three TikToks and one YouTube short, let's do the opposite. Let's right. do one TikTok since they're not showing us any love. And, then, and do three YouTube shorts along with our episode that we were doing every other week at the time right. with the body cam footage in between. And so the algorithm liked that. You know, right. we started kind of, they started really shooting us out there. TikTok or YouTube? YouTube. YouTube. Okay, yeah, because yeah. we were like, screw, screw TikTok, mm-hmm. let's go to YouTube. Because that's the new wave, I feel, yeah. Like, yeah, as far is. as shorts go. I think um, everything, just YouTube is just controlling the overall, the long-term videos, right? 20, 30, 45-minute long videos mm-hmm. or just quick shorts. You, you, my kids watch YouTube shorts. Yeah. 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 I, I shifted mean, my, my kids, get off, got off of TikTok and shifted over to. Yeah. So What do you think about that whole TikTok controversy? Which one? The one where um, they're going to shut it down. Trying to ban it, yeah. So there's I mean, like two-edged sword, right? Yeah, I mean, for me, I'm done with. I'm pretty done with them. I mean, like at this point, like I, I would probably. I mean, we got almost two hundred thousand followers on there, so wow. I need to kind of be at least grateful for that. You right, know what I'm saying? Because right, right. that, that was a big achievement. Mm-hmm. Like we hit some huge viral videos on TikTok that shot us out there. I'm just not happy with what they've done recently. Mm-hmm. 
But, you know, <clears throat> from what I understand, it's they're in China, right? And, and from what the Chinese kids are looking at versus the American kids, I hear it's a lot different. You right, know, and that right. They're all educational mm. and, like, you know, really growing their community and their kids' minds and things like that with right. stuff that's positive and just sending the garbage <laughs> over, over here to our kids. Over here, we're just dancing away. Mm. Yeah. Dancing and doing the... Yeah, twerking, twerking and, you know, go. whatever, whatever they're doing, just posting pictures of drugs and, you know, whatever they're up to man and you have booties and all that kind of stuff that, but it's you know, crazy that they only allow certain things right like they don't allow like guns and things like that yeah. that are just like you know you're just doing your job it's not like you're uh, promoting anything violence yeah and it's for educational purposes i think you're Even especially then, it's like what mm. you do I, I would see it more for educational purposes yeah. and, and i think they for us the instagram thing started getting us too for the store um, because we would put before, like you said earlier, I would put in the caption. So we would put for educational purposes. This isn't weed. This isn't, you know, 21 and up. We started putting all that stuff and we were good. And then all of a sudden, yeah. they closed our that account. Would catch you. Closed it. Yeah. Closed it. This is the second time we get closed from Instagram though. But it's just Damn. posts and like little. So now we got, I got to hide it in a way, but which makes no sense because some stuff, other accounts just post, post it and they're using it. And I'm like, these guys got, you know. 30,000 followers and this and that, and they're not getting banned. I don't know. I, I, like you said earlier, I don't get the algorithm. The logic yeah. is not there, you know? It's like you, some people do it, some people can't, some people get away with it, and <laughs> some people don't. I yeah. keep had all these people hitting me up for drugs on, on, on Instagram, you know? I have these, you know, people that sell psychedelics, you know what I'm saying? Like mm. LSD and mushrooms and stuff, like hit me up and have like these full stores. Open and I'm open. just like, what? what? So I'm like, I'm good. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, whatever. I can get down with the psychedelic world, but I'm not gonna order that shit off Instagram. That's right, right, right. Wow, yeah. that's crazy. <laughs> it's it. You know what I'm saying? And then you're a business owner here trying to do it legit, and these right. guys are like thriving underground, selling you know just, illicit drugs. Makes no know? sense. Makes no sense. We need yeah. to figure out the algorithm for sure. God damn. It, cha- it changes and evolves every day, every year. You know. I've got a buddy of mine that's like trying to do some self promotion stuff, um, just on his like his life story. He's an mm-hmm. interesting guy. Uh, my buddy Jason Lobenstein. Uh, he's from the Woodlands, lives in Austin currently. But you know, just one of those stories. Like dropped out of school in ninth grade. You know, dyslexic, mm-hmm. ADHD, medicated. Um, went to TDC. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Did like a four year stint. Like you know, and a lot of people that's like ruins their life. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because they're a felon and like. He just turned the hustle around and got in the medical space and uh, found like his niche. You know what I'm saying? It took that hustle legit. You know, he's right. He's still selling drugs, right? <laughs> but it's he's just it amniotic right stem yeah. cells. It's not you know methamphetamine or <laughs> right, weed or whatever right, he was right. into. You know, and so like his he's just doing his story and he's got some guys that are he's spending I think four thousand dollars a month on uh, these guys to start promoting them. And I mean, he went from. 200 followers to like 7,700 in the last like 30 days. And it wow. seems, you know, you can kind of, if you're in the social media world, you can kind of see, you know, who all's following him. Correct. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know if that world's gotten a little different now because now they're, you know, it's not that you have just 7,700 followers and you do a post and get one comment. Right. Whatever these guys are doing, he's getting, you know, 50, 100 comments from these people, too, that are, like, you know, they're fire emojis. Right. And, they engage You know, a couple of words and stuff. Yeah. And it's, like, interesting. I don't know if they've just built this whole network of right fake followers or maybe real followers, and they all just promote each other, and he's got it, five it or 10,000 clients, and then the algorithm <laughs> sees it, and it starts, you know, feeding it's like, the I think that's what it is because, like, um, multi-level, multi-level pyramids. I Social mean, you, media you've scheme. seen the guy with the 100,000 followers, yeah. and he does a post and has, like, two comments Correct. and, like, whatever, and like, dude. And, like, and less like, than a percent likes and stuff like, like that. And it's, like, yeah. totally fake. But, right. I mean, like, yo, he's Farming getting 14,000 views on stories and 10,000 views and mm. 7,000 views. Mm. And it's, like. That wouldn't be a bad, like, business to, like, create a membership of, like, 100,000 people. And then, like, you yeah. pay and then, like, they'll comment on your stuff. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be I mean, well, I think it's possible because I have an employee in Montgomery and Ryan told me, Hey, he can get you a lot of followers. They're all fake. And he can get you a lot of followers and I was like, Well what does he charge? He's like twenty bucks. I was like Twenty bucks. You know, and I've yeah. been busy, I haven't got to him, but I'm like, how does he do it? He's like, he's he's a nerd. He's in there. He's just freaking yeah. clicking things. Yeah, There's but the, bots. You know, yeah. But I think the algorithm is smart. Yeah. It's too smart. It is smart. But I think you. when people like when people see they click on you and they see you have a lot of followers and like, oh, this guy must be somebody. They don't click and fact check who are these followers that are following yeah. you. Yeah, you know, they just see and then now with the with now that you can subscribe for the blue check, 
<laughs> you know, people, before you see that blue check, you're like, oh, they're official. So if you see it now. Yeah, now, you, now you just have to have like, what, eight bucks a month? Yeah, yeah I was like striving 14. for that. You know what I'm saying? I was like, I, I got to have a check by my name. And then now it's like, you yeah. can pay. I'm like. Psh. Yeah, I saw somebody make a video. Yeah. like, it's not even worth it no more. Like, it's not, like, dude. Before like, that you was grind, like something like, I got to get 100K right. followers because like, I got to get a check. Right now it's just. Yeah. All right, I'll go ahead and cancel mine then. <laughs> I still thought about getting it, and I was like, dude, I'm not doing this. Some hater shit. Yeah. Well, I, I, I clicked on it, and then it's like, send us a picture of your driver's license. I was like, oh, no, I'm good. And then it's like, give us your full name. And I was like, no, nah, never mind. Because I don't have my full name on my Instagram or my Facebook. Um, just in case you're looking for me, that way you can't find me. Yeah. I don't have my full name. Well, that man, whole social yeah, media I'll thing still is find you, bro. Hey, you guys, you guys get deep in there, like. There's some episodes that I see real quick. Sorry, switching, but Switch you know it. the 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 person will be like, "Oh, his girlfriend lives in Tyler," and you're like, "Yeah, we know," and this is the address, and this is what the house looks like, and they're like, "Oh, yeah." He's like, "Oh, yeah, we already," you know, yeah. like some of the questions you guys ask, you already know the answer to. You're For just kind of sure. is it like fact checking or just kind of see if that person's being honest with you or hiding something? Yeah, that's that's a lot that's of times. Kind of like you're kind of you're just you're you're kind of weighing out with this person if they're legit they're or not. Some they're people true. jump right up and want to help you out. You yeah, know? Well. Uh, that's some of the stuff that we try not to show on the show. You know what I'm saying? Because like people in my industry, you know, from the bail bond industry or bounty hunting industry, they're like, "You're showing all of our tricks," and I'm like, "Bro, like we're like really." I mean, you know, if we're, I feel like we're showing a lot of the very entry level stuff. Yeah. You know what I'm saying that like I anybody think crooks could, know. Yeah. They're like. Yeah. Oh, he found me on Facebook. Oh, okay, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or like, you know, don't tell him. Yeah, big top secret shit. You know, <laughs> but like, you know, some of the stuff we truly get into, um, it's pretty you know, deep. The skip tracing side of things, you know, can get real deep right, because I mean, right. like, you have to, you know, even like you know, tracking cell phones and stuff. We used to be able to do that years ago before mm -hmm. the FCC got a hold of Damn it, but that was like such it. a game changer. <laughs> I was just like in the computer, you know, and it was really really nifty because we used to have a lot of really cool tools um you know and i mentioned pinging mm -hmm. phones because it's not around anymore you know right. what i'm saying but it was something years ago that we had but i mean yeah there was all kinds of cool little tricks and stuff to mm -hmm. i mean we, and we should you know what i'm saying like right. we're fighting the good game over here right you know what right. i'm saying just Correct. like you know u.s marshals and fbi they can still ping phones and they should rightfully so be able to do that you right because right. right. they're traditionally you know traditionally like after the bad guy to, to serve you know, justice, you know, correct, most correct. of the time. But that it's most not time. always, yeah, most of the time. <laughs> most of the time, they, uh, you know, allegedly. You know, or at least we are, you know what I'm saying? I, like, I, my stuff, you miss court and we're coming, you know what I'm right. saying? Like, that's that's just the facts, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So whether you're guilty or innocent, we bonded you out of jail and gave you an opportunity to fight your case from the free world, and then you miss court. Whether you were sick with COVID, which that excuse yeah. is so played out. <laughs> yeah, now. I get that They're like, lot. I got COVID. I'm like, whatever, time. bitch, you're going to jail. <laughs> yeah, you know right. and like, I, even back then, because I didn't really believe in that whole process, they'd right. be like, we got COVID. And I'd be like, a little like, uh, like I'm going to put them in Yeah, go ahead. Like, yeah, let's go. Yeah, but so. I think that's pretty interesting. And then you guys, I don't know. It's just. Do you guys have a cyber team or just. You just have like people. You just off, off of the trade. Like you already know what to yeah, do. Yeah, I'm not real big on it, but I have guys on my mm -hmm. team. You know what I'm saying that like yeah. to dork out on the computer and like you yeah. know, could connect the dots. I've got people Quick. from the social media side to uh, you know the actual skip tracing. You yeah, know, right. where you're getting into tracking uh, mm -hmm. utilities and different things like that. It's so going. easy, especially with social media. People always post what oh, they're yeah. doing. Yeah. You know, one of them you like check where he was at. He's like, oh look, I think I know where where that is that they were just at. So that means they're in this area. It's crazy. That's a cool one. Like, yeah. be able to do the Google pick, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, with the background oh, in it. I haven't it. seen that, but yeah, I've seen videos the where, they, where, they was like, yeah. where they were like, uh, I bet you you can't clone me. And then that girl licked, like, the statue. She licked it, and then the guy was like, okay, based on these coordinates and, like, this, he went and go, f and he's like, and based on this, you know, he went to go find the actual uh, statue that she licked, and he's like, I'm going to swab it, and I'll be back. <laughs> yeah. What was that on? It was like on on Instagram or yeah. YouTube, something oh, like that. But it was like a yeah. I saw they, it. they did it with like the Google pick that you said. Yeah. I haven't done it, but yeah. I, I saw they did that with Shia LaBeouf. What's his name? Shia LaBeouf. Uh, even I'm Steven. Terrible with that. Yeah, yeah. Even Steven guy, he posted some kind of flag somewhere, and based on the stars with that video that he posted, oh, yeah, I saw that. Based on the stars or whatever, these people were able to see the stars, kind of get a general area. Based on the background, we're like, it took them a week. Oh, to it was find a flag. That's it was a crazy. flag. It was a flag that they took down because he he put it up. Look it up. I think it's like a it's a, it was an uh, activist flag, but yeah, I don't know yeah. what movement it was. 
But he put it up, and the counter activists went and they found it and they took it down. Uh, he put like a live stream of it, just yeah, showing the flag. It was a the live stream time. of the whole flag. So they started driving around and like beep, beeping or honking oh, yeah. until they could hear it on the live stream. What? Yeah, and then they found it exactly yeah. and took the flag down and put another flag up or whatever. Crazy. Yeah, that's pretty dope. But based on <laughs> yeah. stars. If you got time, I mean, you can do whatever. You know what I'm if saying? you but, got time. And yeah. some people have a lot of time. Some of these stuff that I see out there, I'm like, who has the time to make these videos, these memes, these it's crazy, these edits and stuff like that? Yeah, that's, I mean, that's where the money's at for them, though. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they, they you know, if you, I don't, I mean, you got to put the time I'm in, right? tracing, that one? Whatever it is you're doing. Yeah. You have a whole episode on skip tracing, or is that? Me? Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah, two months ago. Episode yeah. 035. I don't <clears throat> I think we might as use that as a header. Mm -hmm. them. Clickbait. Yeah. Uh, I'm telling you, they yeah, we have funnel them in there. Yeah. Yeah, my, my guy Hunter that does the puts the, the videos together and stuff, uh, and a camera guy. Yeah. He, he does real good with like tying like the name into like something mm -hmm. that's trendy out there. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's got a good little flow to it. Yeah, I watched about eighty percent of these. They they get good, man. They get interesting. And I like how sometimes the friends real quick will just snitch on them or an ex or something just real quick. Yeah. Or the ex that tries to pretend, no, I've never seen them, never seen them. And then, like, you keep watching the episode and then they find, that, find them at his, her house again. Mm -hmm. There's one like that that I saw. Yeah, like. it's it's interesting because, I mean, that's when they come in the bail bond office, you always get references. You know, you'll have like a co-signer, like okay. the mom sign mm -hmm. or whatever, dad or girlfriend or whatever, and then you'll have their references. And, you know, traditionally, if the person's out on bond for, you know, 60, 90 days, six months, um, you know, they probably crossed somebody in those references, you know, and there yeah. may be an ex. Some people put their ex on there and they're like, oh, right. ex-wife. Well, they want to get out, right? They want to be. Yeah, they, well, they're out already when they fill out the references, yeah. but then like, you know, they need to have six of them in my office mm -hmm. and then the co-signer where we get to my house to have six. <laughs> so somewhere in there when you start kind of calling everybody and you're like, hey, you know, John missed court, John Smith missed court and like, what's going on? And they're like, you know, somebody's like. That's Someone's gonna snitch. He got yeah drunk and pissed somebody off or stole somebody's stuff because he's on drugs mm -hmm. or there's something in there where you know. Mm -hmm. So back, I'll tell we you where we were trying to create a scenario where how could you fall like how can you fall off the grid like how can you completely get off the grid and um, mm -hmm. so we said okay so you got to get a burner phone w where you can't use any of your information personal information. You can contact anybody that you know or anybody that you know family anymore. Member, family, anything? nothing. Forever. That's the only way. And uh, what else did we say? I forgot what else we said. But No credit cards. Yeah, nothing no under card. your name, all cash, you know. Fake ID. Fake ID. So we had to create, like, what would be the scenario where you could just, you know, leave and nobody can find you but that would be so hard we said because even if you got a burner phone and you start looking at the same stuff you were yeah. looking on youtube the algorithm will, it's gonna will fill in the fill in the blank mm. you know it's like this person watches you know it'll start creating a profile based on your habits yeah and it'll link the old profile or the old habits to your new habits and it's the same person it's like it walks like a duck, talks like a duck, must be this person. Yeah. So you can't do the same things you've done before. You have to completely <laughs> change. Which depend on who he's looking for you. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Depend on the crime or whatever you're running from. Um, you know, those people can tap in all that stuff. Right. Anything. Yeah. Instantly. I'm a big like UFO guy. I like watching a lot of shows on that. And there's a there's a guy that just put out a documentary. Um and I, I ended up having to pay for it, I think. And uh, but he was just talking about like you know these phones we've got. I mean, right? Like, you know, I mean they know where we're at all the time, yeah, and like you know they can you know pretty much you know some of these bigger federal organizations I can't, but I mean they can get in your phone, you know, well, man, and like see yeah. all your stuff and all your current flash. Yeah, I mean and all it's just stuff. encrypted. Right. It's just an encrypted code that they can just get through. <coughs> you know, yeah. and it's all in the cloud. It's nothing is in your phone, really. Yeah. yeah. Um, my, my mom's uh, sister was murdered when I was like two. Mm -hmm. So back in like 78, 79, somewhere in there. And, um, it was her husband that had done it and he disappeared. And so it was in Florida back in, like I said, the seventies mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, life kind of went on and the case went cold and which is crazy but you know there's always so much murder out right. there that's like, you know, right. And so when we started, you know, 
to be in the bail business and the bounty hunting business, you have to be a licensed private investigator to be a bounty hunter in the state of Texas. And so my old man had originally started this business, not mine, but being in the business. Mm -hmm. And, um, I guess he just started digging into the case, you know what I'm saying, you know, because it really it kind of ruined my mom's life, in all honesty, yeah, you know man. what I'm saying, like, it, it really shattered her family, and, uh, you know, I don't know, I've never lost even a parent, you know what I'm right. saying, or a yeah. sibling, I didn't have siblings, I was the yeah. only child, like, I don't know that experience, you know what I'm saying, but my mom always suffered from it, you know yeah. what I'm saying, it fueled a lot of stuff that happened in her life. And so he reopened that case somehow with those detectives out there in Florida, and um, when... Uh, the guy, his, his, I think his mom or his dad died. Uh, they tapped the phone at the hospital, and he called, and they traced the phone to like this this harbor up in New York or whatever, where you know, he's got to change his name, his mm, life, everything. Got it, yeah. remarried, had kids. Wow, the full deal. It's like thirty, so thir- thirty five, forty years later. So just living like nothing. And they caught him. Yeah. Yeah, you got to leave everything behind if you're going to commit sure, crime. sure, yeah. You, you, right. Which was a lot easier in the 70s and 80s. Yeah, nowadays. You know, go off the, you know. Yeah. But, uh, you know, and he'd created a whole name and gotten married and had a family and a business and became this upstanding person, you know. And so they, they captured him. And they tried him as a, like, second-degree murder in the 70s, which mm-hmm. the law was all whack back then. Right. And so I think he got, like, a five-year sentence or something like that. So that's crazy. Still found him. Yeah, but still found him. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah, nowadays, they'll you get know, you quick. You get you get kind of lax, right? You've been on the run 30, 35 right. years, and, like, yeah, your they, mom's they, dying. They you know better than to go show up. Right. But that's you're crazy. still Because he still knew better. That's crazy. Yeah, he's but he's like, you know, dude, I'm, I'm going to call at least and talk to mom. And they're like, boom, got that number. Mm-hmm. And just reverse look that up. You know, and there he is right there. That's crazy. So... And I think, and it's good because technology also works in a good way because I think a lot of people have been released from jail once evidence and new things start coming up that, that like it wasn't them or it was them. Oh, yeah. But I think it's like, it's yeah, there's some documentaries out there of like cases that have been ongoing forever that yeah. they just don't, you know, or there's people that have disappeared and it's like, you know, n- my wife knows this guy that there was a case where he was at uh, 1960, 1960 over there by the Billards. There's like a Billards place. Uh, mm-hmm. I know exactly what you're talking about. And uh, he was walking, and then they found his phone, and that's all they found, and they never found anything ever? of him ever. Ever. And he just left that place. From that place to like a corner, there was a phone, his phone, his flip phone. After <coughs> that, the, that's UFO. it. Aliens, nothing. bro. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> But it's like nothing. No, he, nobody. Their family. Nobody. No. No. Went nothing. off the grid. Got a burner. Just got off the grid. <laughs> you know? Got a burner. There's a. So it's like what? Think <coughs> UFOs? You? Oh, dude, it's huge. <laughs> think huge. so? I've seen one before. Really? Yeah. Tell yeah. us about that real quick. Uh, I was on, uh, and so that's the other the other thing. You might have to look it up, but there's like uh, they have a new name for UFOs. It's like UAPs, I think it is. You know. That? They, they've kind of renamed them. <clears throat> but I was coming down 2854 like six, six eight months ago. And uh, I was coming up on the park there by the San Jacinto River. I can't remember the name of the park right there. And um, McDade? McDade, mm-hmm. yeah. And so I was talking to my homeboy on the phone. He was kind of processing some stuff about life. And I was just glancing out the window, <clears throat> and there was a bunch of vultures flying. Like they were kind of coming down out of the sky, you know what I'm saying? They found some something on the ground or whatever. And I was just, you know, I'm a big bird guy, you know what I'm saying? Birds are robots, by the way. Are they? <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like looking at those birds kind of doing their circle deal, and there was this white thing, what looked like it was white through it, <clears throat> and it caught my attention. I was like, what the heck? And I looked. And it was, like, you know, way out there. And I don't know if the sun was shining off of it, but it was, like, a spherical-shaped deal. <clears throat> and it and it, it did the traditional thing you hear about. It was, like, whoop, 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 and it was just gone. Just, like, you could see, like, it was kind of breaking dimensions is what it wow. looked like to me. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. Yeah, versus, like, when you're on the ocean, mm. you can see, like, eight miles right. before the earth curves or whatever. Correct. You can kind of see boats kind of whatever going out of that way. But, like, you know, because I feel like those the speed – in the movement and all that, they're crossing through into different dimensions and going to different spaces That's and stuff like that. Crazy. So it was cool when I was just like talking to Scott and I was like, what dude, I was like, bro, I just saw a UFO, <laughs> dude. And he's just like, okay, yeah, I've got this problem right now. Drinking. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, I was like crying and like, I'm like, oh, okay, well, yeah, like, cool. And then 
So then, I mean, I'd always been kind of, you know, want to kind of call that right. in. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think that's pretty, yeah, that's pretty, pretty dope. Cool. That yeah, great. it was neat. Yeah. So, I mean, it was just, but that movement was so unnatural. But, you know. And they have footage of that. Oh, that yeah. That type of movement. Oh, yeah. Also, you know? this, this uh, Stephen, I can't remember the guy's name. He was an He's ER doctor. Uh, for many years mm-hmm. and gave up his job like 30 years ago to expose the government and how mm-hmm. they hide all this stuff with the ufos yeah and uh, he had a new documentary that came out so i bought it on um amazon thinking it was going to be a bunch of woo woo all right. that and he was just like in the government's Hardcore. face down in dc just like dude y'all are hiding this y'all been doing this Stephen greer maybe greer, yeah Stephen and greer. so like I, I watched this whole deal and he's like you know i want to say he said about 60 percent of the ufos that you're seeing or uaps or whatever we that you're seeing UAPs now are actually the government they're mm-hmm. actually they're flying saucers Train. They have them trained, like. dude. Because you know, if you go back to Area Fifty One right. in the fifties, like they like the first two days are like, oh my gosh, a UFO, these little aliens, and right. then the government came in and was like, shut the fuck up, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, oh yeah, it was an air balloon, a weather balloon, yeah. and like they come out the foil and all right. that stuff, and and so. What do you think they look like? Uh, you were the, you I think were the, they have the like they're called the Greys. It's like uh, you, you know, your traditional like you know Martian looking deal. Like this is gonna get a little weird. I might lose, <laughs> yeah, lose do some it, do of it, this. Do but, like it. my whole deal is is like um, is like you know so you got these Greys and you got these Martians and I I just feel like you know we had this like when you like when you're gonna go back in the history of man. Not to debunk with Christianity and Adam and Eve or whatever, because if that's your paradigm, that's mm-hmm. cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, I respect mm-hmm. that. You know what I'm saying? I lived that paradigm for like 20 years. But the, the other side of it, I feel like, you know, so this Cro-Magnon caveman type guy was star-seeded from, from UFOs. Mm-hmm. Like, they came in and intertwined somehow, whether it was through, you know, sex, sex or, whatever. you know, whatever yeah. they did. And then that's where human beings kind of came from. Because mm. it's like, you know, like you can only go back so far right. finding remains. And it's like, right. you know, this ape looking whatever, you know. Well, I think they say they keep going back on what, like, they continue to discover more things. Mm. Like, it's, you know, it started like, like 2,000 years ago. Now they're saying it was like 50 years ago, 50,000 years yeah, ago. That and stuff. And it just keeps, yeah, and then it just keeps going back. And but I there's think, no anything found, right. you know what I'm saying? But then you get into, like, the Egyptian pyramids and start reading some of those hieroglyphics, and there's always, even in Christianity, there's always little, little flying hints of little things signs. and, like, yeah. little people, right, you know, right, Aztec right. ruins. I think that's, these, like, that's the main one. people. Yeah. It looks it's like he's like, in the spaceship, like, going up. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm like, and I mean, like, that's, I mean, I'm just not narrow-minded enough to believe that, you know, it has that to be. there's, like, that we're, like, you know, you see the some of this only new, thing. yeah, the only, only thing. What's the new Hubble telescope called. They they replaced it. There's recently. a new one that just left. It's James the, um, Hardman yeah. or James. It's, it's some. <laughs> it's got some guy's name and yeah. like, you know, this going out and shooting like you know you'll see some imagery. But it's like, like a tiny little star. window of like this much out of the whole universe. You know, it's like just a little speck. And in that speck, There's you'll see like a hundred billion, a hundred universes <laughs> behind it. Right. Galaxies. galaxies. Yeah, galaxies. That's and, and they're like these. The, the hundred web. that you it's see in just web this one telescope. picture. Mm-hmm. Web. Is it James Webb? Web? James Webb. Web. Yeah. James yeah. Web. That so. one just left like, what is it, like last year? It was. Mm-hmm. It just started. And it has mean. way better cameras now. That's crazy. It's insane. And it's like, that's what they tell us. So imagine the stuff that they don't tell us, like you well, said. Well, that's, yeah. Know. That's like where they're, they're talking about, like, the, the UFO technology. Right. So these crashed UFOs, mm-hmm. they started, like, reverse engineering right. them. Right, yeah. And they talked about even like a lot of inventions that that came out of finding that. stuff like that, right? Like microwaves and different types of technology yeah. that's came out over the last 60, 70 years. And so, um, you know, they talk about like the membrane that the pilot's in, you know, so they can go like all these crazy G forces, you right. know, where like a, pi- a fighter jet can go like ten or twelve Gs before they pass out or whatever. Right. But evidently, there there's some type of membrane that's inside these, you know, unidentified flying objects where humans can get in there and fly them and not, and they not, can go not way past the, the G levels. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. So I took a physics class in college and it all narrows down to physics. Like what can your bar- body handle, you know, time, space, dimension, all that stuff. It all boils down to, to physics, you mm-hmm. know, how fast can you go? How fast can you travel? And with uh, interstellar travel, I mean, we're talking about, you can't do it with even speed of light. Yeah. You know, it'll take you thousands of years in speed of light going at the speed of light. So there has to be something different that we don't know about yeah. that transcends speed of light. We talked about, you know, t- time warping, you know, um, 
space warping, yeah. you know, wormholes, things like that, that transcend the speed of light, which is now we're talking science it's fiction. 3,000 kilometers per second. What is it? 3,000 kilometers per second of speed of light. Yeah, 168,000 miles per hour. What? And that would take you years, thousands of years to get to the to Andromeda. You know, how you can Google how long will it take you to get to Andromeda at the speed of light? And it's like thousands of years, I what think. What was Andromeda? Andromeda is the nearest galaxy. Okay. Nearest yeah. ga nearest um, galaxy from the Milky Way. And they're saying it'd take thousands of years. I mean, it would That's take you thousands and thousands of years. That's so crazy. I mean, I totally, I'm, I'm calling it in because there's <laughs> these people, like, these big groups of people that go out and, and they meditate and like call in these identified. That's even objects. crazier, so, like, you, know? you know? I mean, I don't know, dude. So, so you're going to Mars then? I mean, I, I, yeah. I mean, yeah, you're going to be on I, that? I, no, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I, can, I, can, I can reach those spots here, you know what I'm saying? With plant medicine. <laughs> Na and that's <laughs> another thing, you know, yeah. Yeah. do you actually, you oh, know, like no Joe shit. Rogan talks about, you know, and not just him that, you know, if you take these um, mushrooms or like this, uh, what's it called? Ayahuasca. Yeah, oh, ayahuasca. like oh, I you transcend that. into this next universe and it's like, probably, you know, maybe, I don't know. I yeah, try I've sat with ayahuasca 10 times. Yeah, I've, I've traveled around the world and, and sat in ceremony in, in a lot of different areas. So it's a cool, cool plan. You know, it's a lot of work. You know what I'm saying? Like it's. What it's, do you uh, mean work? I mean, Mental. like you know, just um, I always explain it like the real hairy, horrific side of, of psychedelics. You know what I'm saying? But like you know, with ayahuasca being really strong, it's a vine that's from South America. Right. You know, yeah, it also yeah, grows yeah. in like Hawaii, and they they crush the vine and mix it with this you know leaf that i guess it makes the dmt and they brew it and right. it's like tea you know i mean it's just like i mean I, I'm, on, I'm, I'm on this mission of like excavating my life you know what i'm saying like what makes me tick and why i am the person that i am you know what i'm saying and i did that with religion for a long time and then I kind of came out of that. You know, I did an AA and the twelve step program. Mm -hmm. You know, because I've been a recovering mm -hmm. drug addict, and right. alcoholic. And you know, the psychedelic world was always very taboo. You know what I'm saying? If you're in recovery, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like you don't want to do any mind altering substances right. or anything. Right. If you're staying in recovery and you want to keep your sobriety day. So, um, so I've kind of ventured down that road. And I mean, like with ayahuasca, I mean, it, she's a teacher. It's a very feminine, like divine vine, and. Uh, for me, I've always set like intentions before I go into ceremony because normally I prepare my vessel for like a week before ayahuasca with like mm. a dieta where you're following like certain diets and weaning out meat and no alcohol, no drugs. I don't do either of those anyways, right. but kind of prepping your body and your soul for the experience. It's you know? crazy. Yeah, and they say you can't fast. really just go in there cold turkey thinking you're going to just be okay and... Yeah. I mean, like, there's a lot of other psychedelics you yeah. can do like that. If like, you're into psilocybin or mushrooms, and mushrooms. you necessarily don't have to do so much preparation. But with ayahuasca being, you know, there's a lot of medications you can't right. be on. And, like, there's a lot of stuff you have to fill out that the shaman, you know, will go over before they let and you And he stays sit. with you, right? Yeah, so. it does, man. It never leaves you, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And my wife and I were talking about it the other night, and it was, like, very emotional for her just to talk about it. And we had, we had a sat in ceremony in months, you know. But... Uh, you know, yeah, so, so I mean, like, it's very introspective, you know, so you may set some intentions that you want to seek, and for me, she's always taken me through that stuff, you know, mm -hmm. if I want to sit with, like, you know, fear or anger or resentment or any type of flaws that I may have in my character and that I may want some guidance on, like, with my relationship with my father or ex-business partner, like, I've sat in ceremony over that stuff, and she'll always kind of take me through, like, almost like a schoolroom-type chalkboard where she's like, okay, well, this is this, and this is that, and it's very visual, like a timeline of life that runs through, you know what I'm saying? And then she's like, okay, cool, so now, now it's time to do my work, you know what I'm saying? And that may not be pleasurable, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. for me. Is it like... Um like open your like your third eye or something like yeah, that. Yeah, very very pineal gland. Very this is, this area for me is always very like swelly. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. this part of my brain always feels like it's very like just like almost like a horn. You know what I'm saying? Like very pointy. You know what I'm saying? 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, then for me, then the lessons have always been like, you know, about surrender, you know, cause I want to control, you right. know what I'm saying? Like, right. I mean, I got this, appreciate you God, get prayed up in the morning and a little meditation journal. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, cool. I appreciate you being in my life and part of my life. And I'm like, I got this. And then I go out and I'm just like, oh. <laughs> You know, and I'll get corrected by the universe, you know what I'm saying, a lot, you know, by just my own um, awareness, you know what I'm saying, of watching, you know, my my routine and then what ends up happening in my life. And I want to excavate more through medicine work. And so a lot of times she'll just hand it to me, you know what I'm saying? And it's for hours just... (sighs) can be rough, you know what I'm saying? Hours. Yeah. And some people, you know, you're either going to have like a very... um, you know, euphoric type mystical experience or sometimes the lesson's hard, you know, and most of the time, you know, my stuff's been pretty like, you know, just, just, snap just grinding me in the sand, just like, and was wow. like, oh, and it's like, <laughs> but on the flip side though, that's what I always have to remember because I'll remember right. the, the journey that I'm, mm-hmm. at that time, I'll get kind of hung up in that and I don't really think about the integration and the whole other side of things, you know, and I'm, I'm still in an integration zoom group that I do weekly for my last ceremony where we just talk about life and what's going on and our experiences. Cause the integration on the, on the, the post sides as important as the pre. journey itself or the pre part, you know? And so, uh, cause I mean, I take it serious. You can go blast off if you want on all this stuff that's out there and be like, Oh, that's so cool. And keep going in and blasting off. Right. And never do your work, really, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Correct, correct. Uh, really so take the benefits in. Yeah. So for me, that's been uh, you know part of like integrating and like you know gratitude and a lot of love for me. You know what I'm saying? That's like, awesome. I mean, that's, try uh, that. Yeah, it's cool. Let's do it. Yeah, you gotta find <laughs> okay. a lot of lot, there's resorts okay. and stuff in Costa Rica, and you can go down in the jungle down in you know South America and Peru, and like it really depends how it. hardcore you want to get. I'm pretty bougie, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you I'm, I want to spend you know 10, 20 bands and like you know do it upright, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, like have a really good, gotcha. beautiful experience in some really cool spot in the world, you That'd know? Cool ba- bands is like racks. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Thousands. He, he learned what racks was. <laughs> the like racks day. and stacks and uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's so. awesome, man. I'm a, I, like, part of me wants to get into some of that, but I feel like, um, like me, I don't do weed because that even weed gets me pretty paranoid, yeah. pretty, you know. So like, it's like, dang it, I can't even handle weed. That psychoactive yeah. side of weed, right, yeah, right. cannabis. You know, is it's a lot. like it, it gets me. So I'm like, yeah, man, probably never gonna do it, but one day I want to. Like my buddies will tell me, one of them is like, yeah, but it's it's two different ones. He's like, you know, he's shrooms. If you start just with small dose of shrooms, like uh, microdose, micro, micro yeah. dose, you know, it'll. I get tempted, but not yet. <laughs> not yet. Just because he's like, and he said it too. He's like, yeah, sometimes you do have a bad trip, you know, mm-hmm. and it's like what's on your mind, which, and I guess that's why, that's why when you said earlier, the prepping maybe yeah, to get ready is getting it. ready. And he's like, because that thing is going to open your mind. So if you've had like a shitty week or shitty month and <clears throat> your mind's, over, it's going to just explode whatever you're, you're thinking. It's going to take you to where the plant will take you to wherever you're supposed to go. Uh, Okay. You know what I'm saying? And like some people are like, oh, I had a bad trip. And it's like, well, no, no, really. That was where the medicine was, you know what I'm saying, for you, you know. That's funny. You know, because you, you know, go off and get your ass handed to you and like have some really rough childhood stuff come up or you like, know, some current stuff. And as like, I'm, I'm listening more to Joe more consistently like some of that stuff like I, because of that i would like to go through that that that, that past trauma or certain things is why i kind of want to do it like um he had somebody in there that he did light their light therapy um and he kind of took him to like back to kind of what he went through when he was younger and kind of help him with his mother help him with his father or stepfather and kind of it broke him he says and then it was able. To, he was able to just start. Is that like a red from, light deal, or is that that hypnagogic light? Yeah, 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 yeah. Hypnagogic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, he yeah. went through. He did several sessions, and it finally started working. Him. He's like, now I'm at peace. Now I understand who I am. Who I am. Like, you know. Um, and and then he's a big old boy. Uh, he was a line man or something like that. But he's a they've big got boy. one of those hypnagog. I think hypnagonic. Hypnagogic. It's that word. Yeah. It's, it's they have one in Houston, and I'd signed up to go do it. I, was, I, I couldn't make it. I had to reschedule. That's been like a year ago. Mm-hmm. I'd like to probably sign up mm-hmm. for that again. But I mean, it's just a piece, right? I mean, like I don't think the journey ever stops. Right. You know, you can go sit with all the medicine you want and the religion or prayer or whatever you're doing, and you know, 
unfortunately, man, like uh, the more I keep, I keep sometimes wondering because I'm doing a lot of somatic healing work uh, with a lady out of Houston, and my wife just started um, uh, breath work. She does breath work facilitation now, somatic breath work and uh, heart math, where like a brain heart coherence type right. deal, and um, you know, it just brings up a lot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's like. You know, the body stores all this trauma, you right. know what I'm saying? It's exactly. not it's not up here. Like, you know, that childhood trauma, you know, whether mom and dad get your ass whipped or, you know what I'm saying? Or like you yeah. did bad in school or you got made fun of or whatever. You know, we carry all this stuff and, you know, heart or stomach, you know, for me, those are the big spots. And, you know, I sometimes wonder, like, when I'm going to stop, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, you know, for a while back, it just kept, I mean, like, I was doing all this healing journey stuff, all this work, and having these, like, beautiful moments, you know what I'm saying? Or these days or these weeks, you know? I think after my last ceremony, I think I had, like, a four-month stretch of just being, like, you know what I'm saying? I was just, like, woo! Like, every day, I was, like, damn, this is great. I wasn't even calling that in. And then, like, the flip side of that for me was, like, been, like, four months of hell, you know what I'm saying? Like, where I've been just, like, dude, what? Like, I've, I'm in that currently. I'm currently coming. I had that four months, and then it's, like, I've just been in the valley, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. it's, like, I'm going to therapy. I'm going to couples therapy. I'm doing prayer, meditation, journaling. You know, I'm reading. I'm doing physical, 75 hard. I'm changing my diet. You know, I'm, like, what the fuck? I'm, like, like, it's like you know, I'm just, like, scrambling around. And then it's, like, sometimes I just got to pause and... Just realize, you know, it's just where I'm at right now. Right, it's a right. season, yeah. right? It's a season, yeah, man. It's, it's season, like, you know, you want to get this big relief over mm. here months, you know what I'm saying? You're going to have this flip side, too, you know? Yeah, right? correct. It's like the duality. And, yeah. Oh, gosh, man. Yeah. I think it's you just tough, have to be, uh, be at peace, you know, be at peace with the suffering. You yeah. Know? Be at peace with it. That's it's okay. It's there. It's here. <sighs> it's rough, man. It's yeah. rough. But, so rough. But 75 man. day hard. We talked about that last time too. So right yeah. now you're saying you, you had to start over because <clears throat> you didn't take your picture. Yeah, man, it's uh, Andy Frisella, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> Gotta tag him, man. He uh, he created that program, 75 Hard, and uh, it's just <clears throat> it's a beast, man. You know, but that's kind of the stuff I like. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's Challenging like you know, yourself. It's 45 minute indoor workout. This is every day. Mm -hmm. 45 minute outdoor gallon of water, progress picture, no alcohol, no, alcohol. no cheap meals, no cheap meals. For seventy five days straight. Seventy five days straight. Straight. No yeah. Sundays off. None of that. Crap. Yeah, no yeah. You know, off. of course, that's your normal diet, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, Saturday and Sunday, yeah. I'm gonna eat and you know, None chill. Friday night, Saturday night. It's two days every day, bro. And so, like, I, I the Monday before last, I was at twenty nine days and did both my workouts and drank my gallon and read my book and did all that stuff. Oh, yeah. And I woke up the next morning and was like, fuck. I realized I forgot to take my picture. See, it's never a good one for me. It's never like, yeah. oh, I missed the workout. It's always like the freaking picture. Damn, yeah. That one, that one's yeah. easy for me. And you know, and the funny thing is, oh yeah, you're always like, oh, got yeah. your shirt off, yeah. showing some abs. Well, <laughs> when I was doing it last time, I was trying to stand in the same spot in the in the, oh, yeah. in the red, just so I same can, shorts. Well, for me, it was like, yeah, like just so I can like put it my day one to my day seventy five, and then same thing. Yeah. But see, you're a better man than me because I'd be like, oh, I forgot the picture because uh, it lets you upload. Yes. And I'd be like, I'm just gonna upload yesterday. And then, That's the whole deal, because right, then, like when yeah. you miss, Andy comes yeah. on there yeah. and it's a picture of him with like, his <laughs> finger, and he's like, "Did you forget or did you oh, whatever?" Shit. And mm -hmm. like, you know, if you truly did like forget to load your picture, but you took it, and you're like, "Oh no, I didn't," and then you load your picture and go mm -hmm. about your deal. Right. But I didn't Maybe. take my picture. Maybe. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, I, and I clicked it. Like, I had it, and I was like, oh, yeah, and, like, it loaded it up, and, like, that whole day I couldn't. This is on the app, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, where you can check it off. And I was like, okay, well, how's this showing up in your life? You know, like, how often do you cut your corners, go. bro, and, yeah. like, bullshit and lying right. and all that stuff? And then by the end of the day, I was like, fuck, i got to start over, dude. So you got to take a picture, like, every day? Every day, every day. yeah. Mm -hmm. And, like, when I first did 75 Hard, I was just like, him, yeah, same spot. I'd put the same black shorts on because yeah, I wanted right. to roll through those 75 days and see my body kind of transform. And I was like, after I failed three or four or five times, the first time I ever did it, I was like, yeah, no, dude, I'm just getting a picture. I yeah. don't care what I'm wearing or where mm -hmm. I'm at. You know what I'm saying? I'm just in. snapping it because, like, you know, you get 29 days and for to take your picture, you got to start over at day mm -hmm. one. You're like, because you wanted to have the same shorts on right. in the same spot. You know, I'm like, no, nah, I ain't doing that. Is it more mental than physical, or do you think it's mental. both? Yeah. It's like when you finish it, like it's like it's like rewiring your brain. Yeah, because you finished it. You said <laughs> 126 <laughs> days it took me. Yeah, 
But you finished it. You but got you got finished it, it last time. Yeah, and I was just like, I was all geared up too. I was just like, the last picture, I'm just like, ah. Yeah. And did it help you stay on that path, or were you like, on the 76 day, you're like, all right. Yeah, but there's phase one, two, and three after that. They're 30 day phases. They've got, yeah, it's it's a full year commitment if you want to get one of the chips. He's got like a like a you know chip for completing 75 hard. Mm. Yeah, oh, I phase. thought it was like a chip where it'll <coughs> zap you if you miss a day. Yeah, I need it. Yeah, <laughs> right. You need to and, uh, collar, so you got to take like a one week or 30 day break before you go into the next phase. Mm. I don't know why, because you're in the zone, bro. You're just Maybe like that's boom, boom, boom. Really yeah, yeah. So it's like just it's really the getting that those those synapses and like right. the brain firing. You know what I'm saying? And rewiring. And I was like, okay. And then I was like, nah, I'm not gonna do it. I'm good. And then I floated for a couple, two or three months, mm-hmm. looking sharp. And then it was kind of like, pew, winter came. And I kind of pudged up a little bit. Right. And now I'm back at it again. But yeah, phase like the phases that after that, you have to add another thing in. Uh-huh. So it's like the phase one's like a cold shower for mm-hmm. five minutes every morning. I mean, I just one. brutal, I bro. Where you're just like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm yeah. just breathing, trying to like control my breathing. So some yeah. of these ice, uh, ice baths. They, yeah, some I could just imagine those. I'm a fan. I don't even yeah. get in the pool. Oh, dude, it's next level, bro. He doesn't like, even like the rain <laughs> touching like them. It's too cold. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I've done a lot of cold plunge stuff. Uh, like I, that's pretty, pretty cool. And there's more science coming out behind that. Like at least like. Yeah, yeah, they talk about what like your immune system right, and yeah, like right. joint health and like recovery right, and stuff like right. that. Recovery it's, for it's sure. Dope. Yeah. Like you do like three sessions, like three minutes, and like some like thirty degree water. I mean, it's like yeah, it I mean, when you, you get it, That's the other thing too. You know, like if you want to be in your body, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, because I'll be up here spinning like mm-hmm. hamster wheel, bro. And I used to think, oh, I'm an entrepreneur, and that's what this is about. And I'm like, bullshit. Right. That, that just keeps me the scatterbrained. That's you go drop off in some 30 degree water, bro. You ain't up here no more. Right. You're like, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Comes and then you're like, okay, I'm in my body now. Right. And then it's right. like, kind of, I mean, for me, at yeah, least. Yeah, take all that energy down. Yeah, it's below. a little different drop in the shower cold after you've been in the hot one for 10 minutes. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. you're kind of like, oh, ooh, ooh. ooh. But, yeah. like, you go rolling that sucker ice cold <laughs> off the rip, bro, out of your skivvies. I mean. Yeah, I'm going to have to try that one. Yeah. Because yeah, even, like, this morning I did, I was like, all right, that's enough. <laughs> like, you know, 20 seconds of maybe, maybe, I'm, maybe it isn't even 20 it's seconds. Interesting. It's interesting. Really, you know, it's like it's just cold water, right? But your body just thinks it's like that you're dying. And you get used to it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I went to El, El Salvador and they don't have hot water. And get you got to shower. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? like, Everybody's there. like, oh, it's time to shower. Mm-hmm. Your kids, little kids, everybody. Just, just don't, it don't matter. Yeah. Just jump in and just take a shower. That's part of life. Yeah. They're, just, they're not saying, oh, it's cold. You're spoiled here with hot water. Yeah, they're just yeah. saying, oh, it's time yeah. to shower. <laughs> yeah. Definitely, yeah. definitely. So, yeah, I'm going to have to jump on the 75 days. You should too. Let's do it. No cheat meals. Let's do it. I've done stuff like that. Let's do it. I'm doing that uh, Marcus Philly, that functional bodybuilding mm-hmm. programming right now. It's pretty dope, too. Yeah. Are you familiar with him, Marcus mm, Philly? No. Yeah, he's got some, uh, I, I, I do his little subscription, and he mm. does your little three or four workouts, and you're stretching and stuff, and it's like, you know, I'm broken, man, after doing a bunch yeah. of steroids for 20 years, and like trying to be all yoked up and swolled up. I mean, I tore my shit up. Shoulder, bicep, wrist, everything's banged up. So like with the functional bodybuilding, it's like these like, natural movements with weights you know what mm-hmm. i'm saying like you know you're actually like you know you see those guys that are swinging those sticks like doing those different yeah. movements oh, with okay, them okay. those little like yeah. kind of like marcus doesn't really mm-hmm. do any of that but that's kind of that far, that functional body building yeah we've been definitely deal. getting more into that functional stuff like yeah. kettlebells and we've been doing like the sled and the tire flips yeah. and um you know more knees over toes i don't know if you've seen that program uh, we've been doing sure. that and you know but the ego is like go do bench Go oh, do yeah. squats, go yeah. do biceps and triceps, yeah, 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 and then you end up in the same routine again. And you look the same too, but as you get older, your body starts like to draw yeah. up. You know what I'm right. And I kept adding more testosterone in. Oh, what I would do. I'm like, oh, I'm 40 now, yeah. and I'm doing the same workout I've been doing for the last 20 years, mm-hmm. and I'm getting smaller, so I just add in more, more testosterone, right. more, more. which ended up having an effect on my body. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Which I've had to like rescale off of that. You know what I'm saying? And, um, but yeah, I think it's time to shock the body into something different. You know, I do yoga right. twice a week mm-hmm. and then we do a jujitsu wrestling class once a week with my team. How are you liking that now? I think I, you were just starting I, last yeah, time. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't like it. <laughs> no? 
still. You know what I'm saying, dude? Like I pay, I pay a lot of money to keep my face looking pretty. You know what I'm saying? At 45, and I go in there and dude, oh boy, like I'll be in my stomach, and we're doing like handcuffing stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like right. you, know, you know, sometimes people like you, know, you, you lay me on my stomach like this. Like good luck getting my arms. Right. You know what I'm saying? And right. like we'll have to figure out techniques to you know peel that arm out and like. You know, reach that arm down in front of their face and lift oh, them yeah. up by the nose oh, from behind. Oh, and, like, my, you know, yeah. this dude's like a 10 belt black yeah, belt badass. Man. And he'll just be like, oh, this is on my face. I'm like, fuck. Mm-hmm. Here's my fucking arms. And it's like, also, you know, go toward the face. Yeah. Yeah. You kind of yeah, like, if yeah. I'm on your back and you're just, and you're just like that, I mean, like, you kind of get that, that forearm underneath there, that bony part of the yeah. arm and just start just working forearm. their face and yanking their neck backwards. And yeah. you're going to give them arms up. Yeah. And then if you get one, then I start working that wrist lock, and you're going to get that other one up. There you go. Sound like you're about, like, three months away from uh, MMA? Yeah. (laughs) I mean, dude, it's so – I mean, like, I dread that shit. Like, Joe, my partner, dude, he's always like, excited. He's got a membership there and goes, like, three times a week, so he whips my ass, you know what I'm saying, because he's doing it all the time. Right. And then Dion, of course, is a little scrawny ass. He, he he hates it. And so, like, I when I get there, I'm like, all right, cool, you because know, we do privates. You know, I pay for a private instructor once a week for us, you know, monthly. And, uh, you know, you get in there, and it's like. It's brutal, man. It's brutal. Man, where is this at? Whips. Where, where do you, you go? go to 13 Fortune, right? You no, know, we go down to uh, uh, Joe Morris's place. He used to run the Crab McGraw North, and now he's got a combat. Oh, dude, he's a combat. Like, right com- no, it's off. It's off Ray Oh, okay, oh, okay, okay. Um, oh, I thought it was this one. When I would see you post, I thought it was the one right here. No, it. but Joe's a beast, man, and I've, I've got to pr- give him a, a, a little shout out on that. So like, I'm not being a total dick, man, because. Uh, He's got he's got a lot of experience. He's a combat vet himself, man. Um, so you do like a specialized like combat program, or f- especially for like your industry, or just like in general jujitsu. It's uh, both probably. Is this it? Hero martial arts. Is it condition one combat? Condition one. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at. That's it. Condition one combat. Condition one combat center, man. And so he's doing. He's got a CrossFit class over there now. He does a bunch of different content, but I've known Joe Morris since we were kids. It's so funny because I used to whip his ass all the time when we were kids. Yeah. And this boy went downrange, you know, for the military um, and, uh, you know, gave his life down like Ramadi and all these bad places and, you know, came back a war veteran stud and been in Krav McGraw for, you know, 10, 15 years. Like, the first thing I did when we hooked back up mm-hmm. was I, uh, yeah, that's yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, like I, I apologized too. to him for picking on him. Right as we got there, I was like, hey, bro. I was like, dude, I just wanted <laughs> to kind of make amends for, like, being a dick when I was a kid because I right. knew that dude would, like, literally beat me to death. You know, with my arm, rip my arm off and just beat me to death mm-hmm. with it. And we're tight, dude. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling you, I love him every time I see him, man. It's freaking I'm, cool, man. Got kids in here. Yeah. He's awesome. Yeah, he's got a great thing going over there. I mean, like, you know. I'm going to have to go to one of their open mats. Yeah, yeah. Anytime you want, let me know. I mean, yeah. I'll get you guys down there to see Joe. Yeah, man. I, I, I love it. I'm finally getting back into it now that my schedule is opening up. But I love it except for the next morning where I'm in pain and, you know, I got, like, red stuff all over my scratches face. Scratches from nails yeah. and, like. Yeah, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, I've got a torn rotator cuff. I got my labrum and my rotator cuff are currently torn. And so, oh. like, you know, like. Any I'm, movement I got to be, you know, when they're trying to get me back back to cuff me, I got to be, like, you know, like, yeah. they know. And right, that's right, the nice right. thing about having a little private group. You know, I don't have some white belt over there trying to, like, whip my ass because I'm some big old man. You know, it's we me. all kind of know. Right. Where are you at? Uh, I go to Rivas in Montgomery. Oh, yeah. I coach Rivas, Rivas the shit. Yeah. My kids tra- started training there oh, okay, years okay. and years ago. Oh, okay, and then yeah. we went down here to South Frazier with um, Carson. Jared. Jared. Yeah, Jared. Jared. Oh, yeah. He's a beast, man. Yeah. He's still competing out there. He's a beast. <laughs> yeah, how, do, how do you see that with your kids? Do you see any difference or do you see any um, – any just anything from that super bummed out my kids uh, hung it up like uh, i guess maybe mm-hmm. last year and uh i was like damn dude because they, they were with revis for a couple years mm-hmm. and they're with you know jared down there for another couple years and you know my kids aren't big athletes you know mm-hmm. man like um to my daughter their mom and i like we, you know, we were like you know i was the only child so it was like you know you did it all you right. know man I, mean, I was in a small town yep, so you yeah, do yeah. basketball and football and golf and just yeah. whatever underwater basket weaving whatever you want to do you can do it all 
And then when my wife and I got together, you know, she came from a bigger family and she's like, yeah, you pick one sport. And so like, I kind of like, instead of, you know, not put anything off on her, like I got lax with it. Then mm-hmm. I was like, oh, okay, well, you know, she was trying to run three kids around while I was growing businesses. You yeah, know right. And so it was a frustration point for me. And I think I just kind of threw the towel in, you know what I'm saying? I was like, eh, whatever. And so my kids, you know, they're just kind of They'll go not the really into it now. You know, they're like orchestra and band. And like, you know, these are like, oh, I used to pick on these kids when I was in school. <laughs> but I mean, that was my kids, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, I mean, you want to play violin and saxophone and right, right. whatever. And like, it was cool. When we, and so we at least had jujitsu in there. Mm-hmm. And they're kind of like, ah, we don't want to do it. And my daughter was the, the baddest one out of all of them. Really? Yeah, she, she competed with that ass, dude. She ever compete? She competed. I, I don't think she ever competed, but she was like a student of the year down there oh, with wow. Jared and stuff like that. Oh, nice. All those kids and like, like she whipped that ass, dude, nice. like straight up. At so least she's got it in her, though. Yeah, I think yeah. the skill's still kind of there. And I did hate to see my little daughter get her neck wrenched. I was always kind of like, damn, dude. Like, but she dug it. Did she so. compete against boys and all that stuff? Or yeah, it's yeah, all, in the class, yeah. it's, it's mixed. You, you yeah. get it, bro. Yeah. Like, kind of put you with the size around your size uh-huh. and just get it on. Yeah. You just go. Even this last weekend, I went to Open Mat over here in Conroe. And um, there's this girl. And I was like, all right, you know. And then she's like, oh, shit, what the fuck? And she freaking tapped with me you? through again. I was like, God. I was like, all right, now I got to go a little harder. I was like, God. Again? Yeah, again. <laughs> and then, you know, it's over. And they're like, hey, Ray, how'd you like uh, Nika, I think was her name. Shout out. Um, and I was like, damn, she's good. She's like, she's 15. I was like, dang. She's like, yeah, man, she's been in here like six months just grinding it out. Yeah. No fucks given. Just yeah. fucking choking people she's left new? and right. Yeah, she's yeah. new. I was like, yeah, yeah, I, I let her win. Yeah, I was like, nah, like bitch, nah, I girl. respect. Like, and that's what jujitsu has really taught me. Like, the size doesn't matter. Your strength doesn't matter. Like, it'll be a little guy. I'm like, all right, I can beat you. I'm like, oh <laughs> shit, tap, tap, tap. You know, and I'm like, damn it. And it was a, a while. I think I said this last time too. Like, I, my strength get would get me with another white belt. My strength would win. But once you go blue belt and above, my strength ain't nothing. Yeah. There's n- can't be technique, huh? It no. is, yeah. That's yeah, that's like, where they mess with me too, because I come in there and I'm like, and like Joe to sit back and just like, like let me tired they're myself they're not even, out. Yeah, they're not even tired <laughs> or nothing. Not just that like, strong. <laughs> real slow. Yeah, and then you're like sweating, panting, and they're like, and just yeah. roll you up, and you're just yeah. like, dude, yeah, what like, the hell? Because we're, we're very like power is very uh, linear, right? It's like yeah. power is very linear. It's like you push, it's like, oh yeah, I'm strong, you know. But whenever you're lateral, it's like you can't. How 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 hard can you? you know move a certain way especially whenever you're you're at a you know and these over toes they call it like the 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 weakest point it's like when you're like full flex you know whenever you're like this is probably like the weakest point where your arm can can go or whenever you're on your knees and you're doing like full leg um extension Mm -hmm. you know things like that's like where your your body's like the weakest Mm -hmm. and that's whenever you get the most uh injured is whenever you're at the weakest extension of that joint mm. and you can't be that strong at that at that you know and that's that either flexed or relaxed right. mm-hmm. uh yeah for different joints is yeah. different yeah like for your knees it's like at a full you know full you know bend, bend. Yeah. it's like that's where your knees are the weakest and in sports like in basketball uh, or in soccer that's whenever you're you know moving the most mm. you know, you're at that weakest point so he's always training the weakest at the weakest point to train um, yeah, so that's why that, those knees over toes can can really create really strong strong knees. I need to try that more. But yeah, now that now getting back into it, I, I need to get more into flexibility and doing like you said earlier those movements that are more um, functional. Functional because yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm stiff. I'm You're very stiff. lateral. Just, you know, you, I mean linear. Yeah. Yeah. Just doing Bench weights and you squats stiff. and they got these new weighted like sticks. That's where the guys like yeah. a bunch of guys I know from like Sacred Sons are like yeah. working those. There's like yeah. you know, weighted, they got like a ball on the end, and like just do new and different yeah. stuff with it moving yeah. around. And yeah, because that'll, that'll target those those areas of weakness, you know, whenever you're like this, that's yeah. super weak, you know, wherever that's at. Yeah. Um, but if you're constantly just moving around, training those very weak um, flex, flexing points, then you'll get stronger overall. Yeah, I think that's, and what I like about watching jujitsu too is like just like how the 
like that, that like synergy, you know what I'm saying? When some like right. two black belts are rolling and they're just like, like feet are pushing them up you and they're rolling and they're just like, yeah, yeah it's, it's always like, a counter. And yeah. Counter, yeah. And counter, like, counter. Kind of like, even like just trying to roll somebody over, you know what I'm saying? Like being able to like, if they're on top of you, like kind of bringing their leg in and putting your leg over theirs yeah. or whatever, yeah. you know, then, and then it's like, you could never tip that person. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know the correct order on this one, but like you could never uh, throw them off with your hip, but right. all of a sudden you like, bring something over here and do and something with this foot. And then all of a sudden you push and they're just, just like, yep, and you're on yep, top yep, yep, like yep, instantly. Yep. That center, you got to move that center of gravity, like just a little but it, bit. It's a little positioning of a couple of things. Right. And, and all of a sudden like the be- body just rolls right over, like has yeah. zero effort. Yeah. It's almost like, yeah. Like before I stopped, I was, I was starting to learn that part when somebody would move just a tad bit, I would feel that movement and I'd be like, find now, a window. Huh? Yeah, I can, I yeah. can do it. Or, you know, you push pressure here because they're going to move that shoulder and then you can come back. The other way. Like I was barely mm-hmm. learning that. Now I've lost it. Yeah. It's been like six months. There's always my... a window. They said there's always like a window of opportunity and you just have to know how to get to that. So it's an art, bro. You make your guys go to the classes as well with you? Yeah, we do, man. Uh, I think that's very important. I think that's very yeah. smart, especially in the line of work that you do. Yeah, I think you just have to be, I mean, like we sit with, from medicine work to, to you know, martial arts or gun training, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think that synergy is like mm-hmm. full for me, you know what I'm right, saying? Right, it's right. a full deal. So I think on I, all levels, we want to connect, you know what I'm saying? Right. And so, um, you know, going to the range and like shooting, I've got a shooting range at my house mm-hmm. and... Uh, just that, I mean, it's, I think that mode mm-hmm. that is practicing, you know. Right, right. Same right. with jiu-jitsu, you know what I'm saying? Handcuff, 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 mm-hmm. handcuff. So then when it happens, you're just like, yep. So it's so you know easier. And yeah. if you're not trained or you, people will try to struggle, and it's like, why are you struggling? Right. Yeah, man. It's, uh, and I mean, you know, it's, it's just getting more and more dangerous out there. It's yeah, really it is. There's like so it many really people is. that just don't give a shit, man. Yeah. You know. Whatever. You also have to be mentally sharp, you know. You have to yeah. be mentally sharp and smart like you know, i think doing that keeps you mentally prepared for anything mm-hmm. compared yeah. to if you don't right like uh, i think I, I don't know it was with you but i think jujitsu has helped me control maybe not my anger but on like high stress situations be able to control and like calm down and like kind of walk through the situations kind of like I, I don't know it was your episode but when, when the, we got broken into in houston and i pulled up right when the person was walking out maybe the old me would have been trigger happy or something but yeah. the old me was calm you know i drew my gun i was like hey you know just, what are you doing like you know this and that and then like the old the new me was like it's not worth it they got a few bags just, you know this is an incident that happened yeah yeah, yeah. then you drew down on yeah, the guy yeah and yeah. then what you just let him roll yeah well i mean i was there and then uh, it was a girl actually and uh she was she ran and i chased and then i was like what am i doing like calm down like everything's safe like i don't know what they have on them why, why am i gonna you know so like i was able to compare to maybe a few years ago i would have just been <laughs> like, yeah like, you know oh, them down. right right <laughs> <laughs> yeah so and then i mean she stopped and everything i was like and i had already called the cops there because there, i i'd broken into it was like the fourth time so i had like the the shifts officer's cell phone i was like hey i'm on my way up there they just turned off the power of the building which means they're about to break it in about an hour because that's what they would turn off the power Wait for the battery to die or whatever, and then go in. What was this uh, business? A uh, smoke shop in Houston, by oh, okay. off of Little York. Yeah. And then yeah, I got there and I had my gun. Little on. York, that tells yeah. you. Everything. She dropped all the stuff. <laughs> yeah, she dropped all the stuff, and she was like, I was like, like she started backing up, backing up. I was like, all right, like I'm still, like I was still holding it, and then she backed up and ran. I was like, all right, so I, you know, I went back, but I think I was grateful because I was able to calm down because I was like, oh, yeah, you know, man. anything else I would have. At the time, I'm mad. This is the fourth time they break into me. You know, my feeling, I let my emotion. I would have let my it, emotions yeah. control me, but I, I was able to calm down the strip. Be like, control, no. like, I'm, I'm in control of the situation, so. Yeah, I think um, we were sharing in a group about, like, that fight or flight. You know what I'm saying? Like, those different, you know, like, motions. Fight, flight, freeze, fawn. There's, mm-hmm. like, these different, like, types of things that our bodies go through. Right. And, uh I think even like that that can be good, right? That fight or flight where you're like, boom, you know what I'm saying? And then within that, you know, to kind of, you know, control still, right? And, and be able to like check in with yourself and be like, all right, cool, she dropped the stuff. I mean, you know, I got a description, whatever, you know. I mean, 
it's it's interesting, man. The the mind and the body, you know, right, and like just right. the different. You, know, you still get that adrenaline rush? Yeah, it's super heavy. You know what I'm saying for yeah. me, and like a lot of stuff. My, my stuff's like a lot of what ifs. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So it's like I'm looking at a picture, I'm looking at their charges, and like we're kind of maybe down the fifth ward. You know what I'm saying? Or the hood, or yeah. wherever we're at, or even out in the country. You know what I'm saying? At nighttime, where it's just pitch black at like right. two in the morning. It's, it's like, like you're in their territory what too. This or that. Mm-hmm. Or, I mean, you're like there's like 50 zillion different things running through my mind. Right. You know these what ifs. And luckily, none of that's ever happened. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But uh, do you get like do you get like feelings or intuition or like oh it's a bad feeling? You go with your gut and you like or you just I say, will actually yeah. man because yeah I hunt with some I've been doing this for a long time you know right. like 20 years and so I'm kind of more like I'm not really like I've got younger guys where you pull up in the driveway and they're they just like go. Just yep. running through the door and, just, yeah. uh, and I'm just like yeah no like I step out and I'm always like looking analyzing. I'm like analyzing the whole situation like I'm watching the house the, the people window, the back of the house that. where they're going like I'm just vibing on the whole deal mm. and um you know, and sometimes when you're looking at all these charges and they're aggravated and the guy's got, you know, a bunch Possession, of gun charges, yeah, yeah. I'm just like, yeah, bro, I'm just not going to get killed by this dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to find him and, like, call him back up or, you yeah. know, try to be real surgical about how we take him down. You know what I'm saying? Like, right, right. I'm going to come, like, knock your front door. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to try to catch you up at the gas station. You know what I'm saying? Get your morning smokes or something like that. Like, you're captive in the store and we're coming in hitting you hard or you're getting in the car and we're boxing you in and, like, taking you down. Smart. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. have to be, you dude. Have you want to live, bro. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, these dudes, like, they'll shoot a cop in the face. Yeah, you know? yeah, Some yeah. bounty hunter, dude. You know what I'm saying? So, so yeah, just try to be, you know, I got to get Tactical, home. yeah. Yeah, I got to get home to the kids. And, like, you know, I want to try to, you know, maybe die in some bed when I'm an old man, you know, you a long time from now. You know what I'm saying? There you go. You know, surrounded by family instead of getting smoked in some house. But, you know, like, I'm open to all the processes. You know what right. I am. Mean? Um, I think so, you guys do good. Like how y'all analyze the houses, y'all look at the exits, everything. Yeah, kind of, yeah, yeah. Map it I mean, out. I'm sure there's a lot more, you know, besides you know what we see. But, but yeah, it's real, real interesting. Respect for sure, because that's that's some gangster shit. <laughs> like I, 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 I would love to do that. You gotta come out for a ride along, yeah, bro. Yeah, like, oof, put you in the back seat that. and go out one night down <laughs> the hood, bro. Yeah, I'll go. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. And just gotta stay in the car, but I'll go. <laughs> yeah, stay in the car. And yeah, one of those, y'all stayed up to like two a.m., three a.m. just <sighs> scouting. Yeah, it's like Tyler or something up there, and just. And yeah. I think that one was crazy because um, I think I got the person and they kicked her out of the house. I think it was a girl. And we slammed the dude's foot in the door yeah. and like ripped his nail off or yeah. something. Yeah, and then like the guy, and then after that, y'all figured out that apparently some guy had overdosed and they thought you guys were the cops. So they were like, screw this. And then y'all were like, hey, is he okay though? And <clears throat> yeah. like, what the hell's going on? Like, yeah, I carried, so we <laughs> carried uh, some. Um, what is it? The, the, the nar- blocker, Narcan. Narcan. Narcan yeah, yeah, we carried Narcan with us just in case. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know what that is? No. Reverses if you're overdosing on mm. opiates. You know, so like an opi pen, opi pen? It's op- similar, kind of, yeah. but you like squirt up just, the nose, mm. or you can do, you know, stick them with it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's just a huge epidemic, all the, the fentanyl. Oh, I mean, my it's God. So crazy, it's crazy. Dude. It's like you, you can't even do drugs no more, dude, because, like, you know, I'm, I'm just I'm just saying, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not in that world of, like, right. street drugs, mm-hmm. but, like, but you I mean, I, mean, I was once upon a time, right. you know what I'm I saying? Mean, it's like, you know, you get an X pill and, like, some somebody, fucking mm-hmm. assholes cut it with fentanyl. You know, and you're that's thinking it. you're going to go dance with your mm-hmm. girl at a club and you fucking die. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's like, dude, what happened to getting some X? You yeah. know, I'm just saying. I mean, like, you know, I'm a human, dude. You right, know, I don't right. do X, but like, you know, I'm just, or right. a Xanax or like cocaine. Like, they're putting fentanyl and all and that everything. stuff. Somebody may want to go do some blow one night. Like, I ain't got no judgment mm-hmm. on that. But then we put fentanyl and they fucking die. It's like, what? Has that changed the game of fentanyl? I know that yeah, that's a big thing with, uh, you know, trying to yeah if you're looking invade, to go up you know what i'm saying but Mexico. you're kind of <laughs> nodding off on like something some upper or something yeah. like that it's just we i think they did but they know it's super addictive you yeah. know what i'm saying so they so think they put a little sprinkle in whatever to, it may be you know i mean i heard they put on weed i don't i don't know yeah that, i heard they so. put on everything and anything get people just, super addicted and then it's like but you like drop one too many granules granules mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying and, and like over. and you're dead and none of that's FDA approved. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, <laughs> literally, I mean, from like, what I understand, I mean, like you can have a, like a speck of yeah. like you know, like in a piece skin. of sand, and it's like full even on your overdose. skin, yeah. like if it touches you, oh, or really? smell it's that it. Bad. Yeah. yeah, I saw like the Netflix thing where they where they make mm. it in Mexico or wherever, and these guys are fully covered yeah. bio suit, yeah. like mixing in there, and yes. they've said like they've had people where it touches their skin and this, and they start you know instantly like. 
Not like you get high from touching it. Like you fucking die. Yeah. Yeah. You're out. Yeah. You're done. Yeah. Yeah. I hear that that's like the biggest um, game changer of like trying to stop drugs now because people are actually just dropping dead. Right. It's not even. Yeah. It's It's not even like, oh, these people are addicted. They're just. They're yeah, just, they're just flopping, flopping out. You know, you smoke crack the first time, you're addicted for life or whatever. It's like, dude, you get mixed up in some fentanyl and die, and right. you're yeah. done. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's, it's interesting, man. So I get, I get fearful with my kids. You know, my wife and I are both in recovery. Right. You know what I'm saying? So like, if it's yeah. genetic, you know, our kids, because yeah. they'd be like, oh, it. you know, like you know, this joint or this thing or this thing, you know, it's, it's a, boom, you're dead. Kids just because are of that stupid thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, and know? we did it. I mean, I mean we, we, yeah. we go through that process. Yeah, you like, don't have to, but like right. everybody's probably hit the J it. once or, yeah. you know, did a little EXO or something at the club yeah. or like whatever. Just, yeah. I mean, like everybody's just, just dabbled, just, you know. Just and like, line here. And, yeah. <laughs> a little yeah, social yeah, cocaine. Yeah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just, and then some people have it, you know what I'm saying? And I hope my kids don't ever because like, you know, I love that shit. You know what I'm saying? The first time I ever did drugs, dude, I was like, I want more. Like instantly, Dude, like, I'm I just mean, wired that I way. Mean, I was like, that's you, great. You when can, can we go. do it again? <laughs> like, you can just go. I mean, my, through my stuff, it was mine was very controlled. Mine was just on a Friday night. But, yeah. it, like, you just freaking drink, party, and go. And then you're, you're, you're mature enough. Yeah. Or, like, yeah. I guess normal enough to be like, oh, that's my people Friday that night. Are, you know, yeah. that was that me. Mentally <laughs> yeah. and physically and just socially, you know, weaker. <laughs> and then they'll vulnerable yeah. for uh being you know everything addicts yeah. screw that overdose suicide all the things that you could yeah. to me it was when i would just sit there at 6 a.m i'm like i can't go to sleep just I can't hate go to life. sleep yeah. <laughs> see the sun come up the coat birds yeah. i would call and be like doo, 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 yeah. outside the window i'm like yeah. trying to lay in bed <laughs> <laughs> Don't, get up anymore. don't do drugs, oh, it's guys. Gone. Don't do drugs. Yeah, man. What no. a nightmare, dude. <sighs> definitely, definitely. So what else you got going on? Last time you were selling one of your businesses, all that got went through good? Yeah, the dog business we ended up closing the doors on in, uh, I guess, no. August of last year. Yeah, yeah. So we were just kind of like, you know, my wife wanted to really um, open herself up energetically to something new, you know what I'm saying? And the dog business wasn't her passion. It was something I started as a hustle, you know what I'm saying? Like another business hustle, Mm -hmm. and I had a business partner that trained dogs. Mm -hmm. I bought him out. Next thing you know, we're the dog people having to hire trainers and back office and kennel techs. And it was a big business. did great numbers. It just didn't profit a lot, you know what Mm -hmm. what I mean? We were probably one of the more expensive dog training companies in town. It did half a million, million dollars a year gross. There was just wasn't, like, the 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 money left over was, like, yeah, the margins were just... And so my wife's like, you know, so I mean, I mean it, it did 600 grand the last mm. year we closed it. You know what I'm mm. saying? Like, as we're closing the doors, it's like, damn, dude, like, really? Are we going to do this? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it wasn't to? like, like I said, you know, the mm. numbers didn't match. You know, right. we'd do 600 and take home 20. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. You're like, what the hell? Yeah, we run yeah. some bills through there right. and did some other stuff no, tax wise. No, you know what I'm saying? Well, you know, the kennels were on my property. You know what I'm saying? It's like we were able to legitimately. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but like, you know, but it just wasn't worth it. So like energetically, it was sucking a lot out of her. Right, you know what I'm saying? And right. she's like, you know, in order to move forward, we're going to need to shut this door to have the other one open. Right. And Sometimes so, it just doesn't make sense, you know, like numbers. Yeah. Just the numbers. If the numbers don't make sense after a while and you're not a passionate, passion's going to drive pretty much everything through yeah. through the times where, you know, it's hard. Passion's going to drive, drive that business. Yeah. And if you're just. If you're not there, you're not yeah. there. Yeah, you're, you're almost doing a disservice. But for right. the record, yeah. Blue's still doing good. He's still listening. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of because I took more, of one of my, my bully. Profited. I took my bully there. Yeah. So yeah, it, uh, yeah. And he's still, he's still. Uh, yeah, he's, he's still good. Still listening. Good. Still got his I, little. I mean, it was a good program. Yeah, it was little place good. bed and yeah, stuff. He still he's has his place. place yeah, and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I mean. You know, it was, uh, I mean, it was good. We changed a lot of dogs' lives, helped mm-hmm. a lot of people out, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, so as Suzette closed that, then she kind of got more in her heart math stuff mm-hmm. and uh, went and did some breath work, somatic breath work stuff. And, like, she just kicked that off in, like, the last, like, 30 days. And it's like, because nobody's doing that here. Are yeah. you familiar with breath work? Mm-hmm. I mean, we talked about it last yeah, time. We, we, we had a guest yeah. here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. I have to deep. check it out. Like deep, you want to tap into some like stuff, bro. Mm-hmm. Like just do breath. You know what I'm saying? There's no mm-hmm. medicine in there. You know what I'm saying? Like it's like you're do breathing. You know what I'm saying? And, I'll have to try and, that. Um, start, know, maybe I'll start there. Or, yeah, start, yeah, there start just regular, regular yeah, stuff. Yeah, no yoga, kidding, like, breath work. You know, 
It's so such big difference. Like after we had that guest here, I started mm -hmm. googling some stuff, and I was like, dang, like that really. Even your face structure will change mm -hmm. once you start. Like, your breath work, yeah, oh, like yeah. all that, like, yeah, just really. Your face, like, yeah, if you're a nose breather, yeah, your your face is completely different than somebody that's a mouth breather. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Nose breather is like it's um like, like sucked, yeah sucked in. like your 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 mouth goes in like deeper your nose kind of elongates really mm -hmm. yeah they say if you want to be prettier that you're gonna have to breathe with your nose you know with your mouth. yeah they were mm -hmm. talking about i think uh i can't remember if they were talking about the first one was t taping the mouth yeah. closed at mm -hmm. night yeah, yeah. medical like, tape yeah i was like dude i'll die <laughs> yeah i'm a i'm a mouth sucking I'm just <laughs> That's why I snore, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, and, like and so. The, that'll help you with jujitsu, breathing through your nose. Yeah. Once you start breathing through your mouth, you're dead. Just relaxing into it. Yeah, so I think, you know, Suzette's got a little uh, breath work deal. And I think that's about really it. all we've got cooking. Social media, we're still kind of, I'm looking at some different marketing stuff to kind of crank up the Your Bond Daddy and my Bail Bond stuff. Like both offices have been doing good the Conroe Bail Bond office. In the Houston Bell Bond office. That's the Godfather, right? Godfather. Godfather's in mm -hmm. Houston and Elliot's Bell Bonds here mm -hmm. in Conroe. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I'm trying to think what else I've got brewing. If there's anything big on the horizon, uh, just the crypto. I, I bought a bunch of XRP uh, the last 48 hours. Uh, that's like the only other thing I'm doing. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing some big Bitcoin, you know, scalping, XRP. scraping group that I'm about to dump a bunch of money into. Uh, you know, so I waited. I'm I'm so FOMO, bro, when it comes to crypto. Like I've only made a couple <laughs> good moves in that bitch, dude. And like I told my wife when I was in the shitter, you know, what I'm saying the last year, I'm like, dude, we need to buy crypto. And she's right. like, no. And of course, it's like, pure. And she's like, hey, XRP. And I'm like, babe, it was like 15 cents six months ago. You know, yeah. it's like 50 now. 50, yeah, it's 53 this yeah. morning. Yeah, dude. Wow. I was just like, I'm like, okay. You know, I bought it a dollar and something last time, so I was like. Well, at least I'm gonna bring that average down. So I bought like 2,500 yesterday, 2,500 today, and then about to dump some. I feel big like we money always in. know when to buy, but we just don't. Just FOMO's for yeah. real, yeah. bro. Yeah. I mean, like yeah. it just yeah. like I'm gonna miss out. Like XRP's gonna be a hundred dollars a piece or whatever, <laughs> thousands of dollars. <laughs> it's the new wave of whatever, yeah. and I'm like just tapers back, and then like, it shuts down again. So really, yeah, that's about the only other thing I got going. You know. I'm gonna dump some money in this Bitcoin scalping scraping deal. It's local, and because mm -hmm. I mean, like I bought, I've got a forty-two thousand dollar Bitcoin. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I'm FOMO, bro. Yeah. You, like straight you, up, dude. And I, obviously, I'm still sitting on it because I'm waiting for it to go up to eighty. You know what I'm saying? I'll it's dump supposed it. to go up to like uh, like a hundred thousand by the end of the year. Yeah, that's so. I mean, like. Yeah. <laughs> bye, 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 bye. Yeah, dude. I mean, wow. it's yeah, and then of course you know Bitcoin is down to like fifteen Went up to or something. It's at thirty now. Right. Yeah. now. I what was that, 15? That yeah. was like two months ago. Yeah, Ethereum's shooting Jeez. up too right now. I just hit like 2100 bucks. I mean, I've got I got, I got, got some money in crypto, but yeah. what I'm figuring out, as soon as all my stuff gets back up to where it was a year or so ago, I'm probably going to switch over to U.S. dollar coin and then send it all to my guy that's doing this scalping, mm -hmm. scraping deal. Because okay. he US, knows what time it is. U.S. dollar coin. That's take these notes. It's go too back much. and listen to this. It's too much. It's the it, wave, bro. Yeah, it's the wave. You either catch on or you're going to be left behind. Just like I mean, that. I think the dollar's just kind of petering out. You know what I'm saying? So. I mean, I don't watch it too much, man. I mean, I've got I've got plenty the of them change. sat back in my, you know, with the house. But, like, you know, like I'm just like, I think the new wave is going to be this crypto stuff. You know? yeah. I, I think it's the, what they call Internet 2.0. I mean, Something like that. Yeah, 3. I mean, like We're at 3.0 now. Yeah, 3. Point, I mean, you all remember when the Internet came out. Yeah. I was like, fuck the Internet. Like, I'm going to fuck on a computer. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> Forward like, all these yeah, emails. Dude, fuck all that. <laughs> now, now we fast That's forward it. twenty something, thirty That's years, it. and it's like now AI, this crypto. Everybody's AI, like, AI crypto. Dude, like I'm not doing no crypto, whatever. And I'm like, hmm. I'm like, I missed. What if? Yeah. It's the what if. Yeah. So. I have, yeah, because I had know. a buddy that had. Uh, he bought Bitcoin. Like it was like three hundred dollars. He's like, oh, I'm not gonna do anything with this. So he sold it for like four hundred. Regret ever since then. Yeah, like 2010 <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. Up. yeah. yeah. Dude, the news up, in yeah. Well, it's, like, it's like that guy that paid people was paying people because he had all this Bitcoin on a hard drive, and he was paying people to go through the trash can to find it because he had billions now of Bitcoin in a hard drive, and he just lost it, never found it. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Just like that. Just like <laughs> you know, and it's growing because I have a, a Bitcoin machine downstairs, and most I would say 90 percent of the people that come in there are probably 50 and above. 
50? 50. Really? Yeah. And you have people come in regularly? Yeah. yeah. Oh, cause you, so downstairs you buy cash, which is, I, I recommend people not to do it just because if, <laughs> if, if Bitcoin is at, like, it's at 30 right now, right? The machine sell, what you can buy for 20 on on the app or whatever on um, crypto.com or some or of yeah, those, yeah, Coinbase, they, they you're, what you can get for 20, you're only getting about $14 worth when you put it cash because they, they keep a lot of that change. Does that make sense? Really? So let, yeah, let's just say you with $20, you get one coin. If you go through the ATM, you get like 0.75 of a coin for the same 20. Damn. But is there a way to dump a bunch of cash yeah. where it's untraceable? Yeah. So apparently, is it? apparently that's what it is. That's why a lot of I'll people do it. I'll be tomorrow the suitcase. <laughs> I'm like, hey, bro, can you lock the door real yeah, quick? Right. Put but, an uh, AR on top of the machine. One yeah. of those one of those we little um, bank bank cars, you know, the little bank trucks. Uh -huh. Yeah. Shows but, up. But I mean, I, <laughs> with its own security it still has guard. to be traceable <laughs> because you still have to put it to your coin. It still has to send to your wallet. So yeah. it's still just, it's just instead of transferring from your bank account, you're just putting cash. Yeah. But I mean, these people, uh, sometimes the receipts will be there. I'm like, damn, I just put $3,000 in here. Damn, I just put another 2500 in here. I'm like, jeez. Yeah. Yeah. But also, there is a lot of uh, fraud going on, too. Nice. I had a lady tell me that she, there was, she was buying something online and they're like, just send it to us in Bitcoin. And then she never got it. And, <laughs> and then it was lost. And then it's like, like Bitcoin and stuff is traceable, but then it's not because the chain is like, the blockchain, yeah. blockchain yeah. and like, that's like when i transfer my money over to this guy that scalps and scrapes or whatever he does i don't know exactly what he does i know he day trades the shit out of it and makes my makes me money but yeah, he sends something. you this like 50 number code to send over thirty thousand dollars or a thousand or whatever you're sending to him it's like dude you fuck up one of them numbers bro and it's <laughs> like to somebody like, else it's gone dude yeah. your money's just gone instantly <laughs> that's it's like it went from your bank account thirty thousand to just Somebody to the got ether. it. Someone's like, oh, someone messed up a number again. Yeah, <laughs> like you could hit them up. Like, hey, I accidentally sent this over to your account on accident. Oh, damn. Oh, that shoulder. Oh, dude, that's bad. So, but yeah, man, that's about all I got cracking, bro. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Good. That's awesome. That's You're real good, great. man. Real good. So, real quick, guys. Thanks, everybody that's tuned in. We got them right here on screen. Your Bond Daddy. Make sure to go check them out on YouTube. Check out these videos. These videos are real dope. Like, I, I really like them. Um, and I watch them with my kids sometimes in the morning when we're headed to school. Um, <laughs> we just put it on, and they're like, oh, shit, he got him. So um, and my daughter loves so it. So good. Um, so uh, check him out. He's on YouTube, Instagram, as well as your Bond Daddy. Facebook, TikTok. All TikTok, over. TikTok, all, all over, over the place. Yeah, platforms. just search Everything. your Bond Daddy. He'll come up. And you'll see his face. He'll come up with shades. You, you got to bring those shades so you can match the picture <laughs> <laughs> anything else from you where else where else can they find you where yeah everything? man just all all major social media platforms and then, like i said our conroe office uh is 108 east davis the one with the barbecue pit pistol out in front of it over by fiesta Classic. you ever use it i would used it for the first time in 15 years right. like a month or two ago oh, wow. made some wow. stuffed pork chops and some potatoes it was nice, good nice and then downtown houston godfathers off san jacinto and i-10 1112 wood street so that's our our downtown houston office and other than that that's it. what's the phone number for 713 Conroe. bad boys is okay. houston <laughs> uh con <laughs> 713-224-3600 is down in houston and then uh here in Conroe is 936-494 Four 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 four. Oh, remember that, guys. Forty four forty four. So right if you're there, in baby. there, remember it. Fours. That's the number. Because a long time ago, when I was in there, you know, you got to remember numbers nowadays. They Don't let spell bonds. There you That's go. Us. All right, guys. Thanks everybody tuned in. See you guys next week. Peace. Peace.